You've reached the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. Para español, marque el número 2. If you are a veteran or service member or are calling about one, press 1. To connect to support for LGBTQI plus youth and young adults, press 3. So when someone dials 988, they can expect to have, you know, a person, somebody who's real on that other end. They're going to hear that intro of, hello, 988 Lifeline, how may I help you? Or how, how may I support you? And by saying that, we're kind of building that connection of, hey, I'm just a person. I'm, I'm real. I'm not a robot. We're not some answering machine. It's not like, um, you know, call, text, support, whatever. It is a person. When it comes to the definition of crisis, and everybody always tries to determine, oh, is this a crisis, is it not a crisis? And our job isn't to determine that. Our job is to simply listen. You know, everybody can feel like they're in a crisis. Everybody can have their own symptoms or be experiencing whatever it is they need. And all they really need is somebody to listen. When I was younger in high school, even, even a little into college, um, I struggled a lot with my own mental health. I struggled with, um, you know, thoughts of self-harm, even acts of self-harm, thoughts of suicide. And oftentimes when I hear people tell me these, you know, their own experiences, I can sit there and be like, wow, I thought the exact same way. And through that, you kind of build that connection of we're both in this together. So once a person requests an in-person visit through our mobile response, they can expect a two-person team to come to their home, typically made up of a peer or a person with lived experience and also what we would call a qualified behavioral health professional or a clinician. Once they're there, we would ask permission to come in and we would listen to what's going on, really just sit down and hear the person out, listen to what's causing them to feel in crisis, what is uh, led up to that moment and also times in their life when they've been resilient and have been able to solve that. We would do an assessment to see if that person needs uh, further intervention such as a hospital or uh, a behavioral health professional that may be at a different level than we are. Um, and we would partner with that person to really think about how do they want to come through this crisis? What are their goals? What do they want to work on? And how can we help them with resources? I think the, the benefit of having a peer or someone with lived experience is really that it brings empathy and understanding to the situation. They may not have gone through the exact crisis or this similar situation, but they know what it feels like to feel hopeless. They know what it feels like to be overwhelmed and they know what it feels like to have hope and to move forward through crisis. the crisis care center people can come into themselves they can walk in or they can be brought in by a mobile crisis team um, and the crisis care center when they arrive somebody will come greet them um, and then a peer will sit with them and orient them to the program they'll be able to get an assessment um, and they'll meet with a nurse most likely and get a nursing assessment as well um, the peer will help them with some safety and crisis planning um, to determine kind of what they need and then we can get them connected to what they need. Crises can be all across the board. So it can be that somebody's just lost somebody recently and they're struggling to deal with that. It could be a significant mental illness that's creating um, issues for them at that time. It could be somebody's feeling suicidal or homicidal. Our peer support specialists are the ones who are introducing people to the crisis care center. So they're letting them know that they have lived experience and that there is hope. They know that people are looking out and advocating for them to feel heard. Uh, 
Um, so crises can really run the gamut. It's whatever is kind of exceeding somebody's capacity at the time for them to move forward and feel safe. Having a peer support, being able to say that, you know, I understand what you're going through in some ways. Um, I'm not going through the same thing you are, and I never did, but I do understand what it's like walking in and asking for help and how scary that can be, um, but that it can be helpful um, and treatment does work and there is hope.